we are back, back at it, man. Y'all yeah. already know what time what it I is. Say, I say. What you say? Yeah. That's what I say. Okay. That's what I say. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's good, guys. So I was looking this up, man. Um, I saw it in the. I don't know if I was in the comment section. I was, no, I googled. I was trying to see who the first. You know, they they talk. They they come. They put Anthony Johnson and they put William Ellison in the same kind of breath. Really? So Anthony Johnson apparently was the was supposedly the first black slave owner in the mm-hmm. South. I mean, in America. Okay. I don't know what state he 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 was in or what, but I guess that's what we're going to read here. But Anthony Johnson, very first black slave owner in America. Okay. So I'm gonna have my baby read it here. All right, let's go. The birth of Anthony Johnson is celebrated on this date in 1606. He was an African slave and farmer and one of the first black property owners in colonial America. He was a tobacco farmer in Maryland and had his right to legally own a slave recognized by the Virginia courts. Mm, Wow. Wow. There is no information about his childhood. We chose this article's date because it coincides with when Virginia became an American colony. In the early 1620s, slave traders captured him in Angola, named him Antonio, and sold him into the Atlantic slave trade. So he was a slave. He was brought to Virginia in 1621, abroad or aboard the James. I guess that's a boat. Wow. The Virginia muster census of 1624 lists his name as Antonio, not given, recorded as a Negro in the notes column. Antonio, not given. What does that mean? He don't have no last name. Yeah, I must be. Wow. Historians have some dispute as to whether this was Antonio, later known as Anthony Johnson, as the census lists several Antonios. This one is considered the most likely Antonio was converted to the what is that Catholic religion. Mm-hmm. After arriving in Virginia, Johnson was sold as indentured servant to a white planter named Bennett to work on his Virginia tobacco farm. Slave laws were not passed until 1661 in Virginia. Before that date, Africans were not officially considered to be slaves. Oh, wow. The work required remained brutal. It said Africans. Slave laws were not passed until 1661 in Virginia before that date. So from Africans, 1660, Africans weren't officially considered save slaves until 61. So 1660, what were they considered? Indentured? I don't know. Free. Africans were not officially considered to be slaves. Okay, keep going. The work required remained brutal. The description was merely a different word. Such workers typically work under a limited indenture contract for four to seven years to pay off their place in the middle passage room board lodging and freedom dues okay in the early colonial colonial years most africans in the 13 colonies were held under such contracts of limited indentured servitude except for those indentured for life they were released after a contract period wow indenture for life Mm -hmm. Except for those indentured for life, they were released after a contracted period. Those who managed to survive their period of indenture would receive land and equipment after their contracts expired or were bought out. Many white laborers in this period also came to the colony as indentured servants. After 1661, slave laws meant the slave had no contract and was a slave for life. Darn. Antonio was almost killed in the Indian Massacre of 1622 when Bennett's plantation was attacked. Wow. The Powhatan Native Americans were attempting to evict the colonists. Wow. They raided the settlement where Johnson worked on on Good Friday and killed 52 of the 57 men present. Ooh. Wow. In 1623, a black woman named Mary arrived aboard the ship Margaret and was brought to work on the same plantation as Antonio. Antonio and Mary married and lived together for many for more than 40 years. Conclusion of indentured servitude. Sometime after 1635, he and his wife concluded the terms of their indentured servitude. Antonio changed his name to Anthony Johnson. He first entered the legal record as an un 
indentured man when he purchased a calf in 1647. On July 24, 1651, he acquired 250 acres. Ooh, he had the land land. 100, I don't know what H.A. is. 100 half of land? Mm, no. Johnson was granted a large plot of farmland by the colonial government after he paid off his indentured contract by his labor. This was under the head right system by buying the contracts of five indentured servants, one of whom was his son, Richard Johnson. The head right system worked in such a way that if a man were to bring indentured servants over to America, in this particular case, Johnson brought the five servants, he was owned, he was owed 50 acres ahead. Wow. Or servant. Wow. That's good. The land was located on the great Nassawat, Nassawatak, Nassawatak Creek, which flowed into the Pungotini River in Northampton County, Virginia. I want to be able to say it right. With his indentured servants, Johnson ran his tobacco farm. Wow. One of those servants, John Kaser, would later become one of the first black African men to be declared indentured for life. Before the antebellum South, in this early period, about 20% of free black Virginians owned their own homes. In 1652, an, an unfortunate fire caused great losses for the family, and Johnson applied to the courts for tax relief. The court reduced the family's taxes and on February 28, 1652, exempted his wife Mary and their two daughters from paying taxes at all during their natural lives. Wow. Wow. At that time, taxes were levied on people not property oh wow so they pay taxes on people because you were property i guess yeah under the 1645 virginia taxation act all negro men and women and all other men were levied on people not property under the 1640 did i read that already i did under the 1645 Virginia Taxation Act, all Negro men and women and all other men from the age of 16 to 60 shall be judged tithable. It's unclear from the records why the Johnson women were exempted, but the change gave them the same social standing as white women who were not taxed. During the case, the justices notified that Anthony and Mary have lived inhabitants in Virginia about 30 years and have been respected for their hard labor and known service. Ooh, I didn't know it was that much read. You're right there by the 1650s, so yeah, oh, you're good. By the 1650s, Anthony and Mary Johnson were farming 250 acres in Northampton County while their two sons owned a total of 550 acres. Wow. They had the services of five indentured servants, four white and one black. Wow. Wow. In 1653, John Kaser, a black indentured servant whose contract Johnson appeared to have bought in the early 1640s, approached Captain Goldsmith claiming his indenture had expired seven years earlier and that he was being held illegally by Johnson. A neighbor, Robert Parker, intervened and persuaded Johnson to free Kaser. Parker offered Kaser work and, and he signed a term of indenture to the planter. Johnson sued Parker in the Northampton court in 1654 for the return of Kaser. Okay. The court initially found in favor of Parker, but Johnson appealed. He wasn't playing. Mm -mm. In 1655, the court reversed its ruling, finding that Anthony Johnson still owned John Kaser. The court ordered that he be returned with the court dues paid by Robert Parker. Wow. That's what he get. This was the first instance of a judicial determination in the 13 colonies holding that a person who had committed no crime could be held in servitude for life. Though Kaser was the first person who was declared a slave in a civil case, there were both black and white indentured servants sentenced to lifetime servitude before him. Did not know Keep that. On, Rita. Many historians describe indentured servant John Punch as the first documented slave or slave for life in America. As punishment for escaping his captors in 1640, Punch was required to serve, he said, I mean, his said master or his assigns for the time of his natural here or his natural life here or elsewhere. The Punch case was significant because it established the, the disparity between his sentence as a Negro and that of the two European indentured servants who escaped with him. One described as Dutch, and one as Scotsman. 
is the first documented case in Virginia of an African sentenced to lifetime servitude. It is considered one of the first legal cases to make a racial distinction between black and white indentured servants. Mm. Wow. The case, the Caser lawsuit. The Caser lawsuit distrim, dis, dem, demonstrated the culture and mentality of planters in the mid 17th century. Individuals made assumptions about the society of Northampton County and its place in it. According to historians T.H. Breen and Stephen Enns, Caser believed Caser believed he could form a stronger relationship with Robert Parker than Anthony Johnson had formed over the years. Caser considered the dispute to be a matter of Patreon client relationship and this wrongful assumption resulted in his long his losing his case in court and having the ruling against him johnson knew that the local justices shared his basic belief in the sanctity of property the judge sided with johnson although in future legal issues race played a larger role the case or lawsuit was an example of how difficult it was for africans who were indentured servants to prevent being reduced to slavery most Africans could not read and had almost no knowledge of the Engu English language. Planners found it easy to force them into slavery by refusing to acknowledge the completion of their indentured contracts. Wow. So first you could be an indentured servant and then when your contract runs out, then you become a slave. That sucks. That's in reverse. This is what happened in Johnson versus Parker. Although two white planners confirmed that Kaser had completed his indentured contract with Johnson, the court still ruled in Johnson's favor. In 1657, Johnson's white neighbor, Edmund Scarborough, forged a letter in which Johnson acknowledged a debt. Johnson did not contest the case. Johnson was illiterate and could not have written the letter. Nevertheless, the court awarded Scarborough 100 acres, 40 I don't know what hat he is. Of Johnson's land to pay off his alleged debt. Mm. Dang. The Johnson story is one of the many the first. Where are you going? The Johnson story. This mouth is crazy. It got a, its own little roll. The Johnson story is one of many of the first cases of how blacks were victims of land redistribution and theft. In 1662, the Virginia colony passed a law that children in the colony were born with the social status of their mother. This meant that the children of slave women were born into slavery, even if their fathers were free, European, Christian, and white. This was a reversal of English common law, which held that the children of English subjects took the status of their father. The Virginia colonial government expressed the opinion that since Africans were not Christians, common law could and did not apply to them. Anthony Johnson moved his family to Somerset County, Maryland, where he negotiated a lease on a 300 acre plot of land for 99 years. Wow. He developed the property as a tobacco farm, which he named Torres Vineyard, Torres Vineyards. Mary survived and in 1672, she bequeathed a cow to each of her grandsons. Research indicates that when Johnson died in 1670, his plantation was given to a white colonist, not to Johnson's children. Now that's messed up. Mm -hmm. A judge had ruled that he was not a citizen of the colony because he was black. In 1677, Anthony and Mary's grandson, John Jr., purchased a 44-acre farm where he named farm which he named Angola. John Jr. died without leaving an heir. However, by 1730, the Johnson family had vanished from the historical records. This, this, is, wow. that, this is that hidden knowledge stuff that you would never know that this is another one of the things, you know, naturally not taught to my community so that they have education of things like this would exist in That's many other up, stories. Though. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting to know that, you know, blacks owned white indentured servants yep and then after your contract ran out you automatically became a slave but look how they erased him from the the records and did not they didn't want that to be known because you know what you know why it because the, the land because the lineage would it would come back and say it will eventually come back and say my dad my family owns this hundred or acres of land and whoever it is it so they wipe it off and so can't nobody come back and claim that land yeah wow this was interesting 
All right, man. That was that was education y'all didn't know, and we didn't know either, man. Wow. We were, yeah. Awesome. So I wonder how many more um, blacks that were in America that owned slaves Plenty. as well as indentured servants, because this is something surely not discussed and brought out. Nope. Wow. All right, we'll keep doing more of these because um, because I, I think there's a lot of education out here that's been hidden that's not talked about. All right, like, comment, subscribe. Don't take a nose. Drop a comment down in the section below. If you want some more, see you in the next video, guys. Love you.